I'm not crazy. <laughs> This week on Lights, Camera, Vegas, Kristen Bell's having a good time in her new thriller and telling all about the suspenseful series. Exactly, and I'm so glad you said that. Then we're really getting wild with the stars of Jackass. We think that this is one of our best Jackass films and can't wait for all you guys and, and ladies to see it. From extreme stunts to a true story scoring big points with football fans. Then it's just fun, man. Yeah. He doesn't like contact. You know he's playing football? See what Kevin James and Taylor Lautner are telling us about home team and the movie's connection to Taylor's Twilight days. For a while there, it was just like the Twilight moms. Comedian Debbie Gutierrez is cracking us up as she gets ready for a big return to the Vegas stage. Snap a picture and then send it to a doctor. <laughs> oh, I made you snort. <laughs> And we're kicking off the month of love with a special hot list ready to ramp up the romance. Lights, Camera Vegas starts right now. Welcome to Lights, Camera Vegas. If you're looking for a mystery with a little bit of romance to kick off your February, well, Kristen Bell has got you covered with a thrilling new series with a very long name. Uh, hi, I'm Anna. Hi, Anna. The truth is that I drink a lot, and sometimes I mix it with pills. And I'm here because I woke up this morning convinced I'd witnessed a murder. Suspense thrillers are my all-time favorite genre, but what I really appreciate about this series is that you guys really borrow from all those classic elements in the best way, but then turn it on its side, and you can tell you are in for something different with this one. And Kristen, let me ask you, right away with the title of this series, you know this is not your standard fare. <laughs> Exactly, and I'm so glad you said that because that there was talk of shortening the title and ultimately we decided it needs this long title to let people know what to sort of set the tone because it is so uh, different what we're doing. I saw- They said you saw a murder. She is bad crazy. I'm not crazy. <laughs> I think one of the best things about suspense thrillers is trying to figure out what's going to happen. And I pride myself on usually figuring out those twists and turns, but I did not guess the ending on this one. So congratulations, well done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's that's what we that's what we set out to do from the beginning. And I think uh, you know, through good writing, direction, and some 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 performances, I think we were able to pull it off. I'm worried about you. It's gonna be okay. Hello? Tom, I mean, for you, you have so many layers to play with this part. You know, a father, kind of a love interest potentially. I mean, what was it most about this script that drew you to the project? I mean, it was the completely original tone. I, I'd never I'd never read anything like it. And then once we were on set, I'd never been in anything like it where you're actually getting a chance every day to do something that felt new and that's scary as well. Like you, you know, you, you, you. When you try anything new, you don't know how it's going to work out. And but we were in such good hands, and everyone else around us was so good that I just feel like you could just feel that halfway through when it like clicked into gear, that this, this, this could work. Well, if they won't be the detectives, then I will. I just want things to get back to normal. I bet they do a Dateline on it. Obviously. It's a different experience for us as a viewer, but what is the most suspenseful part of shooting a thriller like this? Oh, wow. Um, it had, buckle up, it has to do with my bladder. <laughs> um, because the most suspenseful part is that in, in these thrillers, particularly the ones that are written by women for women, mm -hmm. there's a lot of wine. And I was drinking so much hibiscus tea <laughs> Throughout the series, the suspense was, when are we going to cut and will I make it to the restroom? Spoiler, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and she has a serious drinking problem. No. OK. Because this has so many great twists and turns, each one of you, what is that first movie or series that you ever watched that you absolutely did not see the ending coming? The Sixth Sense. But I feel like that's that's a very obvious answer. But like that really, I, I, that's the first time I remember being like, what? In the cinema. Michael, what about you? Uh, probably Empire Strikes Back. 
Really? Oh. That was the first time I saw the, the bad guy win the movie. Hmm. Mine is way more recent, but it's the beginning of my of binging. You know, ten years ago when I watched Damages. Oh, see, and again, but there's so many times you do guess the ending. So when you have a series like this that keeps you guessing and surprises you, it really is a testament to all of your performances and the writing. So thank you for such an entertaining journey. I loved it. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Ray. I know what I saw. The world waited for what felt like forever. Then, the wait is over. Hello, I'm Johnny Knoxville. Welcome to Jackass. Oh, I was just in Vegas last night with Dana White screening uh, Jackass Forever. I too. Why didn't you guys invite me? I would have come over. I would have loved to have had you. <laughs> Dana, I've known him for a long time. Great guy. He's a great guy and he's been so kind to us, helping uh, promote the movie. And uh, he's just, uh, you know, he's just terrific. Well, let me ask you, Johnny, because, you know, this movie's going to come out. It's going to be a smashing success. People will want another one. So why don't you just bring the sequel to Vegas? <laughs> oh, man, that'd be fun. We always have a ball in Vegas, that's for sure. If you're gonna be dumb, you gotta be tough. <laughs> when your friends and family found out, and even your kids, you're gonna go do another Jackass movie, what was their reaction? Well, my oldest daughter's 26, so she was a little nervous because she knows what that means. Mm -hmm. But my 10 and 12 year old, my girl and son, they don't know what that means, yeah. right? I think they get it now. The promos are starting to come out, and <laughs> I just, they don't get to see the movie, though. They're too young right now, yeah. It's a Texas rat snake. Venomous? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, congratulations. I'm sure it's an absolute blast being back together, back on the big screen. And by the way, Steve-O, can we just talk about your Men's Health magazine? Because if people like what they see in that spread, just wait for the movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, mean, I just say better with age. No dad bot over here. No siree. Oh, well, thank you so much. You know, I actually really uh, was mindful about trying not to eat so much and exercising a lot to get in really good shape for my men's health photo shoot. But as soon as that shoot was over, man, did I go off the rails. But I know enough. If you're gonna be dumb, you gotta be tough. You're still blowing people up. As if life's not hard enough. For us to be back together, which people for years have been going, when's another jackass? When's another yeah. jackass? So even though it took a little longer than usual, to bring it back at this time was the perfect time. What headliner here in Las Vegas do you think would be most game to do a stunt with you? Adele. Adele. Don't forget. I was yeah. thinking Adele too. We need Adele. Adele would love to be in the Jackass yeah. group. Carrot top. I was thinking carrot top all <laughs> Yes! Carrot top. Carrot top. I remember yeah. Yeah. Carrot top like all a, around. Big sledgehammer. Yeah. Carrot top would fit in well with us. Yep. The blue man group. Chris Angel. <laughs> Celine Dion when she comes back. Celine might be braver than you think, right? Oh, uh, you never, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. She's got some pipes on her. Who do you think would be most game to do a jackass stunt? You know, I met Bruno Mars once and like, he likes jackass and I think he would totally be down to come out and play. Yeah, don't you think? Well, I gotta be him then. Yeah, Bruno Mars. And I, I, I think Katy Perry would be fun to shoot with too. I met her and she seems down. Well, like I was saying, you know, Adele has pushed back her residency for a while, so Caesars Coliseum has a vacancy. You could bring a live show to Vegas. Oh boy, would that be a complete <laughs> show. Oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine her fans show up? You're like, you're not getting Adele, but tonight, something just as good, jackass. Oh <laughs> my God, wow. Will you make him an actual coffee, Stephanie? Here, I made you another one. Still ahead from the Twy Moms to the Tryhards. Taylor Lautner and Kevin James take to the football field for home team. But first, Debbie Gutierrez made Rachel laugh way too hard. <laughs> oh, I made you snort. <laughs> Hey, everybody.
everybody, it's me, Crazy George Wallace. I'm so happy because we got Lights, Camera, Vegas with Rachel Smith. You can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong. Always follow Rachel. Lights, Camera, Vegas! You go somewhere exotic, right? You go to Hawaii for a week. I'm getting ready for baby. Spiritually ready for baby. We're getting emotionally ready for baby. Here's how you get ready for baby. Are you listening? Here's how you get ready for baby. You set your alarm to go off every two f hours. That's how you get ready for baby. Debbie, how are you, my friend? <gasps> I'm good, Rachel. I miss you. I know. I like virtual hugging, virtual you know? Hugs. Oh, oh my gosh. Honestly, it's so good to see your face. I mean, we've been doing interviews for so many years because Vegas is one of your, I mean, let's be honest, your favorite comedy stops and why not, right? Absolutely, absolutely. The MGM, they treat me like a queen. The queen Seriously. you are, honey, the queen oh. you are. <laughs> By the way, you're going back to Brad Garrett's Comedy Club. I just saw Brad at Carrot Top's 16th show anniversary at the Luxor. Brad Garrett here. What the f is that? I Thank you, Brad. Everybody loved, well, they all love Raymond, but they like you. They like you. And he was like, Rachel, I got a new venue. I'm not in the basement anymore. It's an upgrade. So he was very excited about the new updated showroom. I know that's what he tells everybody. I'm not in the basement anymore. <laughs> Moving on up. Moving um, on up to the <laughs> first floor. No. <laughs> So I was able to see the club in progress, you know, I got to go back there and look at it and um, take a couple walkthroughs with the hard hat and everything. Woo! This will be the first time that I go through as a performer and see it. And, you know, Brad has always said, as long as I've got a club, you are there on Valentine's week and Mother's Day week. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. As funny as Brad is and as great a performer as he is, he absolutely is a champion of other comics, female comedians as well, which I've always loved. Absolutely. And when you work with Brad, you are the headliner. He's the, the MC. He makes it absolutely clear. And he just gives you, you know, he just gives it all over to you. And it's his house, but yet he turns that over to you. And I just couldn't be more grateful. He is so much fun to work with. We're just so excited to have you back because your brand of funny is truly so hilarious. It's so uplifting. I mean, I'm sure you have a lot of new material since we last saw you too. <laughs> well, you know, that's interesting too. Cause I'm like, I wanted, I wrote stuff about COVID, but I'm thinking nobody wants to hear about COVID. You know, they don't want to address the elephant in the room. And uh, so the most I say about COVID is I do a little bit about masks, you know, like, you know, I get it. And masks are, you know, but look, I wear a bra when I come out here. I don't wear it for me. I wear it for you. I respect you. So I will wear my bra in public. Now, when I get home, I can take my bra off and hang it on a doorknob and never touch it again. But when I step out in public because of you, I will wear my mask and my bra. Exactly. Yeah. If I wasn't wearing the bra, it wouldn't be tennis. It'd be tennis. <laughs> <laughs> All of the COVID time, did you? What do you think was the funniest show or series you watched? Did you did you stumble on anything that you found kept you entertained while you were at home more often? Um, Ozark. I went back and watched Ozark, and they do have a little bit of funny. There's a. <laughs> I love Walking. Ozark. It's a knee slapper. <laughs> I told my husband, I go, have we seen so many people buried in the last two years? I mean, when was the last time somebody said? Rachel, get a shovel. We got to go bury this dead body. And with the kind of shows that I watch, and it's funny because I'm there with my popcorn watching Walking Dead. <laughs> I'm dark. I'm got a dark sense of humor. So, and I love look, how I ask Debbie, what's her recommendations for a good comedy? You're like, Ozark, Walking Dead, Handmaid's Tale is a hoot. <laughs> oh my gosh, Handmaid's Tale is amazing, right? I watch it standing up like, Whoa. By the way, what I think is funny, your commentary about Sister Wives is hilarious. I mean, are you just fascinated with that show? I love Sister Wives. They are the Titanic of marriages. <laughs> and oh my, I love watching it. I dragged my husband into it. And so now he's watching it with me. And that Cody, oh my gosh. Oh wow. my gosh. I have thoughts. <laughs>
I think we all do. So. Oh my gosh, Robin, <laughs> I hate crying. Since when? That's all you do is cry. Jeez, and I'm really worried about her neck. I think she needs to go see somebody about that neck. Seriously, is it not getting bigger and bigger and bigger? It's got to hold up that square face too, because that's a lot of face to hold up, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I made you snort. <laughs> you got the my middle kid used to be a he, and now she's a she. And that makes me a transparent. I did have a special come out during um, the pandemic. It's called Las Chingonas. It's uh, not in Spanish, just the title, and it's on HBO Max. Awesome. And yeah, and I have uh, two grown children, and I talk about my three grown children, and two are in the LBGTQ community. So I talk about um, my child who's transgender and help parents wrap their head around it. Because, you know, it's it's a tough thing, and you can, be, you can be weighed down by it, or you can come see my show, and you can kind of get an idea of what we're all going through. Because I think by now everybody knows somebody who's come out or whatever. And, you know, it's like, I get it. You're excited. It's like when Harry Potter found out he was a wizard. But come on, <laughs> let's not be so touchy with mommy. You know, if you're going to change your name every two days, I'm just going to call you honey. Honey. <laughs> well, you know what? Honestly, you bring so much fun. And I just love that your list of call. You know, listen, everyone finds funny where they can, where they, in different spots. But I know we always are to laugh when we see you live on stage. And I'll be there. Uh, Monday through Sunday. Okay. So the week before Valentine's Day. So Valentine's Day is on Monday. So if you're looking for something to do to uh, celebrate Valentine's Day and you kind of want to beat the crowd, um, come and see my show. It's, it's, we, everybody gets kissed. They kiss their significant other. And we just talk about how cool, healthy, fun relationships are. You know, you know me. That's what I talk about. You know, yeah, you're so relatable. Don't yeah, don't, don't sweat the little stuff. Good God, you know? When I got off the road, if my husband kept the kids alive, when I got back, he did his job. He did his job and I brought him some Burger King. <laughs> Thank you. That's romance. That is. I'd be happy right? with a, a Whopper, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Honey, thank you for giving me some laughs today. We all need it more often. And we're going to be so happy to welcome you back to Vegas. Me too. I can't wait. We'll see ya. Still ahead, Kevin James says he's a Twy dad, if there is such a thing. What it's like for him to be paired up with a star from the Twilight series in Home Team. But first, love is in the air in Vegas. Locations prepped for Valentine's in this week's Vegas Hot List. The Vegas Hot List, brought to you by Pepper. February is the month of love, and there is no better place to celebrate love and passion than here at Pepper. This new hot spot at Resorts World was designed with connection in mind. And you'll find so many ways to make Valentine's Day extra special this year. From luxurious lingerie to candles and lotions to pamper your partner. There's even books on how to make Valentine's Day last all year long. Oh my. <laughs> Chocolate and roses are nice, but the gifts you'll find here at Pepper will really ramp up the romance. And in this week's hot list, we're looking at the other places in Vegas ready for a memorable Valentine's. Head straight to the love sign at the Venetian for the perfect photo to capture the holiday. A stop at this beautiful art installation at the Waterfall Atrium will kick off a big night with your Valentine. Paris may be the most romantic city in the world, but thankfully, we've got the Eiffel Tower restaurant with some of the most breathtaking views of the Strip to share with that someone special. Do something truly artistic on Valentine's by stepping into the paintings of Van Gogh. This 360 degree immersive experience is truly a work of art and will create a unique atmosphere for date night. Coach, Mr. Goodall is on the phone? Roger Goodall is on the phone. The commissioner. He didn't say what his job was. Coach Payton has been suspended for a full year. Sean, what are you doing here? Just came to watch my son play football. Being Sean Payton's son ain't easy. 
it may be easier on him if you were on that field with us every day. You gotta love a fun, feel-good movie. That's always something that we look for these days, but especially when it's based on a true story. And Kevin, let me ask you, I mean, how much of that aspect is what drew you to this character and wanting to tell the story? It, it, it made it for me because it's, yeah. you know, if you heard this is, and it was just somebody who made it up the, the you know, as, as a movie to become, you know, just wrote it that way, it would feel too over the top. Yeah. It really would. And uh, the fact that it was, once I heard the whole story and what happened with Sean Payton, what he did, I was blown away. So it was, it was a no brainer for me. Has he had much involvement in this story? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He was, he's been in the whole process. You know, we, we had to get his okay to play him. And then, you know, I wanted to learn as much about him as I could to, to portray this part. And Taylor, Taylor has known him for like 12, 10, 12 years or something like that. And he's really good friends with him. So, yeah. Wow. So Taylor, you already knew Coach Payton? Yeah, yeah. I, um, I met him when I was filming the final two Twilights. Um, we filmed them in Baton Rouge. Um, wow. Only like an hour from New Orleans. And he invited me out to a game, um, became friends with him then. So it's really a full circle, crazy story for me. Coach Payton is going to be our new offensive coordinator. Our defense sucks, too. Then it's just fun, man. Yeah, he doesn't like contact. You know he's playing football. Taylor, first of all, too, you've got, you get a co-star with Kevin James. You got Rob Snyder, Adam Sandler producing. I mean, was this kind of like a perfect playbook for a really fun assignment? Yeah, yeah, it really was. I mean, it just couldn't have been more perfect. Just uh, working with all those people who I love and respect so much. A story that, you know, I know so well. Uh, the football world, which is huge to me. I'm a diehard football fan. So, um, you know, co coaching these these 12 year old boys when I started acting around that same age, um, it, it, it really was a, a pretty special project to be a part of for me. You guys know what Drew Brees does? When everybody else has gone home, Drew stays on the field. You see what he could have done better. That's how you become great. I believe that we will win. Uh, the Warriors did lose, just to be totally clear. And Kevin, I know that you, you know, you've shot movies in our city. You've been here for fun, for NASCAR. We now have a pro team with the Raiders here. What is on the top of your perfect playbook for a great weekend in Vegas? All the above. I mean, <laughs> honestly, I, I love doing stand-up, performing stand-up there. I'd love to see a Raiders game. I really would love to go there. Uh, I, I hear the stadium is pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. Pretty incredible. Uh, I was there for many, many UFC events. Uh, you know, uh, it's just everything that happens. There's always stuff in the restaurants are fantastic and oh, yeah. a lot of fun in Vegas. So yeah, I, I miss it. Golf, it's it's great. Well, you both are welcome anytime. And you know, Taylor, it's interesting. This show, this movie is opening on Friday in Netflix. And you mentioned Twilight. You've already been dominating the platform this last year. Is it kind of crazy to you see this new generation of fans who discovered the franchise because of Netflix? Yeah, yeah, it is. And you really noticed it because you started like having teenagers come up to you on the street again, because for a while there, it was just like the Twy moms and <laughs> like the, the older group of our, our, our Twy hearts. Um, so having having the younger generation start to watch them again is uh, pretty cool. It brings up a lot of memories. Not just moms. Kevin, you were a Twy hard, a Twy dad, right? Team Jacob, yes, without right? A doubt. I don't know if we're called Twy dads, but yes. You in football country now. Of new movies and shows to kick off February, and here's wishing everybody a month full of love. Thanks for being with us for Lights Camera Vegas. Until next time, guys, take care.